welcome to yet another edition of the Digital Rights Africa podcast where we talk about everything privacy and data protection, cybersecurity, child online protection, and intellectual property rights issues across Africa. Today, I have been joined by an eminent African, um, and I like to call him my father as well, but he is the former vice chairperson for the African Union Commission, and he just joined the Africa Digital Rights Hubs Board. Um, Ambassador Kwati, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um, yes, I, I really want us to have a discussion around where, you know, digital rights sits in the broader agenda mm -hmm. 2063 for Africa, which mm -hmm. is the Africa we want. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe we can start it from there. You were mm -hmm. the, you know, immediate past vice mm -hmm. chairperson for mm -hmm. the African Union Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, you were quite instrumental in the development mm -hmm. of uh, this agenda. Mm -hmm. What does that mean uh, for Africans? You know, Africa is a continent where interaction, trade within the continent between us as Africans is minimal. Yes. And we recognize that uh, it's important to raise this interaction, to plan properly, to take decisions on Africa's future. And to be able to do that, you need um, information. Information is power, ICT. And that is the way we can drive educational drive within the continent in uh, ambition to develop an Africa which is truly literate throughout and numerate which will enable us to imbibe technology. And the only way we can do that is through expansion of digital information, digital technology within the continent. So this is the connection between the digital hub, which tries to achieve in Africa's ambition for Agenda 2063, to develop an Africa, which is coherent, integrated, democratic, politically aware, now coming into its own as a, a continental nation, from sea to shining sea, as the Americans call this. So the whole idea of the digital hub becomes central to Africa's drive to modernization. And it helps in the um, decision making helps in planning. It allows us to have a balance between the free African market and the planning stage. So this is really a revolution in the making. And um, that is why I'm particularly proud of what you has, have achieved <laughs> in bringing this about, because it opens the way Education now doesn't have to be within concrete walls. Yeah. It can be abstract, it can be everywhere. Oh. And the African youth have been particularly adept at adapting to technology. Yeah. It's as if they're gifted for that. And it's a chance they're waiting for. Because they no longer are prepared to wait in the farms in the background. They want to move forward in the digital world that is ahead of us. So for, for me, this is the link between the Agenda 2063, yeah. Africa we want, and Africa where we are now. And it provides the material for the Continental Free Trade Area Agreement to come into its own. Essentially, you're saying that digitization is going to be very core to this drive. It's at the very center of everything we are hoping to actually achieve. Thank you very much for mm. this. I mean, we've, we've seen technology mm. innovation mm. in Africa in a very big way. Mm. Um, most governments have now embraced mm. technology because we have seen how it directly mm. impacts 
socioeconomic development. But having seen that, mm -hmm. uh, we continue to lag behind. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, if you take an area of even the digital divide, right, mm -hmm. uh, around um, the, the rich, let's say rich mm -hmm. communities mm -hmm. and the poor, around the, the able mm -hmm. and the vulnerable, we still see mm -hmm a huge gap in, in really bridging this divide. Mm -hmm. And already as a continent, mm -hmm. look, uh, the Africa we want means integration. We're already facing physical challenges mm -hmm. around um, integration. Mm -hmm. We have these challenges that is even coming with technologies in mm -hmm. our own countries. How mm -hmm. do you think we should start looking at these issues? Because they are real challenges and sometimes for some of us when we look at how, um, you know, ambitious uh, mm. this agenda looks. We think mm. that it's almost impossible within the 50-year mm. period mm. that has been slated mm. for it. What do you think we should be doing to really you, accelerate you, you that? You know, if um, I should take your mind back. Yes. In introducing Agenda 2023, um, Madam Zuma, then, who was the chairperson of the African Union, mm allegorically put it as a report to Ghana's first president, Kwame Nkrumah, and telling him that we are in the year 1963, <laughs> we have achieved integration, we have put into practice what we dreamed about, we have transformed our borders into bridges of cooperation. Our children are now literate, they've mastered technology and they are holding their own in the world where they're developing the human capital and mastering technology. Now, the only way this could have been achieved or this could, this could come to pass is to have education in science and technology spread across the continent. And that is where digitization, digital technology comes in. That is where education for everybody, not just for the rich, education across the board, science and technology, the flowering of culture. And you will notice that the African youth are very hardy. They are prepared to take great risks to attain what they see now on television is possible. And they uh, are particularly adept at adapting to technology <laughs> to bring their lives forward. And it is only through digitalization, digital technology, education, science, and technology that we can achieve that. And what the Africa, what the hub that you have introduced does to bring this to their very doorstep and to make it available for them. And in spite of what uh, people may think, I think the African youth have taken to technology and digitalization as ducks to water. And given a chance, they are ready to leapfrog and overcome the digital divide, overcome the underdevelopment that we are in. It is now for the current leadership to make it possible for them to attain <laughs> their dreams. And the way they can do that is to use this data as evidence for decision making. You know, it is what we need now is evidence based planning, evidence based decision making, the correlation, the balancing of um, planning to free market. You, you can have a free market, but the free market must be balanced by planning. And as I was saying earlier in the debate this morning, if you are expecting 200 graduates from university at a particular point of time, you should be planning for 200 jobs to cater for their needs. <laughs> and that planning must take account 
of what the content needs. You must take account of where the resources are and where the needs are and put them together in making decisions for the future. Uh, it, 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 it does away with just allowing things to do, to develop in a haphazard manner. You must have a certain balance between what we need, what we want, and what we have. And it's that, the link between that is the digitalization and the hub that we have. Looking at, I, I think you're really um, bringing out in me mm -hmm. um, some issues that I, mm -hmm. I get very passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I, I, I tell my father that mm -hmm. they have failed us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I don't think I am, mm -hmm. you know, I belong to the youth. I think I'm mm -hmm. even past that now. So I, I don't agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> so that means, we, and yeah. you know, but with, with the current leadership mm -hmm. that we see across mm -hmm. Africa, mm -hmm. and you mentioned leadership really driving this agenda. Mm -hmm. If you look at most of our governments mm -hmm. and majority of the leaders mm -hmm. that are at the mm -hmm. helm of affairs mm -hmm. are octogenarians. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them don't even understand technology which sits mm -hmm. at the center of this agenda. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I am also burned to believe based mm -hmm. on what I see that you know, uh, maybe they don't, you know, they, they're just waiting for their time mm -hmm. to pass. So probably they don't mm -hmm. even care as much about mm -hmm. the youth mm -hmm. and what this future. Do mm -hmm. you think that in the current crop that mm -hmm. we have, you know, we have that leadership. And I, I'm, when I say that in terms of governments and all, mm -hmm. because they need to take the lead to drive mm -hmm. this agenda, mm -hmm. Or the youth mm -hmm. should be looking at some other strategies because we have to live in the future. I, I believe that the political space that the drive towards democracy in Africa provides gives the youth the opportunity to get more involved in grassroots politicking. The youth must now begin to drive the agenda and to strive to get into positions of power and influence and to determine what they really want rather than have another generation determine for them what they think they should have. <laughs> and it's about taking advantage of the expansion of the political space that is now inevitable. You know, sometimes it might appear to you that uh, things are dark, things are dark, but the, the darkest part of the night is just before the dawn. And what the youth have to do now is take advantage of the possibilities and equip themselves with knowledge, science, and technology that is only available through a digitized process which which can develop with our walls. Yeah. You know, you have a, a virtual university, everything's available on the net for the youth to get the basics to apply themselves and not, not to imagine that uh, they have to wait for the future. The future is now. They have to grab it and run away with it. With organizations like Africa Digital Rights Hub mm -hmm. and maybe personally mm -hmm. as well, sometimes we, we feel frustrated because mm -hmm. we, we, we get impatient mm -hmm. with organizations like the African Union mm -hmm. Commission, mm -hmm. which we believe, mm -hmm. you know, has mm -hmm. what it takes That's to right. really lead this, right. this action and, and right. push. Uh, right. Do you think that, you know, you have been there and, mm -hmm. and so it's easier for us to sit mm -hmm. in the back mm -hmm. and, and critique mm -hmm. and all of that. Yeah. What do you think is really causing this snail paced mm -hmm. approach to, to these issues? The African Union is a member state driven 
organization. What it does is to attend to the needs of the member states as communicated to it through their representatives and the ambassadors. And any two or three member states sufficiently concerned about an issue can have it brought as an agenda to the UN. So it is important for member states to be bold enough to organize and relate to member states with similar points of view and push them through the ambassadors in Addis Ababa, through the Council of Ministers, to the heads of state, to have them discussed and, and move forward at the summit level. So there's a, there's a, an element of points of view coming from the base up and then relating back to the base for them to become decisions to be carried out. Um, to imagine that heads of state to just dream up matters at the top and bring them down is to fail to recognize the potential of what can be done at the grassroots. Yeah. So it's important for issues to be debated within countries to reach out to neighboring countries of countries or with countries with uh, similar points of view and to push them at that level. Then they become resolutions, and decisions to be brought back and to be implemented at the member state level. So there's an interaction, there's a certain dialectic between the top hmm. and the down. Yeah, I, I like the fact mm -hmm. that you've brought that up, but mm -hmm. um, sitting in the technological space mm -hmm. and seeing how innovation mm -hmm. really happens in this space, mm -hmm. usually it happens outside the mm -hmm. government realm. You have mm -hmm. private sector, you have mm -hmm. civil society mm -hmm. really pushing policies mm -hmm. and all of that, and they really don't have a, you know, a table or a say. Mm -hmm. Do you think that mm -hmm. it's about time, mm -hmm. um, you know, organizations mm -hmm. such as the African Union mm -hmm. look at how to mm -hmm. rope in um, these leaders, especially when it comes to technology? Absolutely, absolutely. And what can be done is for people with ideas at that level to bring them to their governments within their countries and to have the decisions, the, the, the issues thrashed out at the national level between business and government, between the social people and government. That can be difficult, sometimes almost impossible. So. Oh, <laughs> you, you, you'd be surprised at what you can do. I remember that uh, at, the, at, the, at the United Nations, Kofi yeah. Annan was able to bring to bear the influence of uh, business in the United Nations decision making process and was able to move a lot of very important issues. That but isn't are. that because he created the room for mm -hmm. what we now call multi stakeholderism? Mm -hmm. Precisely. And how Precisely. do we really do that within the current AU framework? That can be done through suggestions of member states. Okay. Through Council of Ministers and having sometimes in their meetings, having business involved, you know, rather than take a decision and then get business to, to implement. implement. You must formulate the, the decision making process with business at the same time, because they know best what they want. Well, mm -hmm. I, I think we are coming to the end. Any mm -hmm. final words for you know, people in the digital rights space, organization like ours, industry mm. players, and even governments in terms yeah. of how to really go. I, I, I believe that we are at the cusp of something truly transformative. And we have to intensify the discussion and the debate and take advantage of the democratic space that is now available 
in having the national decisions taken in association with like-minded states through ambassadors in Addis Ababa to bring matters to the agenda. Because the, you'll be amazed how heads of state, even though they may, they may appear aloof, are interested in getting and becoming more relevant to the issues of the continent. I think you are at the cusp of something very new and transformative, potentially transformative. So kudos also to the organization <laughs> for the work you've done. But uh, just remember that it is only just beginning. The potential is there. Well, thank you very much for coming. All too soon we've come to the end of another episode. Mm -hmm. As you heard it, the potential is there and the journey has just begun. And, and for us to look at this issue from the continental perspective, um, as civil society, as industry, even as individuals, we really need to start engaging our governments on some of these issues. Um, thank you very much for joining us on this episode. I will uh, join you again with another episode soon. My name is Tiki, and this is the Afri Digital Rights Africa podcast, where we discuss everything data protection and privacy, cybersecurity, child online protection, and intellectual property issues in Africa. See you soon. Bye.